Hi, everyone. I am Julie Baldino. I'm the owner and managing broker at Front Door Realty, and I'm super excited today to be here with Mary Cameron, who is a declutter and organization strategist. And we are going to be talking today about tips and trips, tips and tricks for decluttering your home. So thank you, Mary, for being with us. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me in. Yeah, you bet. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your business, and why you are passionate about decluttering and keeping people organized? Sure. Um, I think that I'm so passionate about it because my life was a mess. Um, I was completely a hot mess. I was in pharmaceutical sales, traveling all over the U.S. and being very successful in that part of my life. But my home life, as far as coming home to messes and cleaning when your husband or kids are there really kind of was weighing on me. So I kind of took some strategies that were working in my professional life and moved them into my personal life. And the whole purpose of it is just so that I have more time so I get to do what I want to do in my life, whether that's, you know, hanging out with my kids or watching Netflix on my own. I just like things in their place so I don't have to clean. That's the whole strategy behind it. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I also feel like you aren't fully enjoying your home unless it's clean and clutter free and you're surrounded by things that you love. So, and I'm a big proponent of feng shui. Yes. I love that. In my home. And I feel like the absolute basic first thing you have to do is clean and declutter. You know? Absolutely. And oh. I, I think that in the times that we're living in right now, it's the one place that you can have 100% control over is what's inside of your home. And there's nothing better to me, especially now is walking in, taking that deep breath, decomposing and being like, you know what, I might have to pick up, but it's only going to take me, you know, under 15 minutes to do that. And I think our home should be a sanctuary, especially right now, because we're, um, I don't know where everyone else is watching from, but I live in Maine and we're not on a strict quarantine, but when you go out, our world definitely looks a, a lot different. So um, I think it's just so important to just have that nice calm space to come home to. I agree. And I think that other people can feel it too when they walk in. I'm huge on decluttering and getting rid of things. And I also have a lot of crystals in my house and everything is... Uh, thoughtfully placed and people notice when they come in my house they say like why does it feel so good in here and it feels good because the space is open and clear of any debris and with the exception of my dogs that throwing their toys all over the floor <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> clean so yes yes and there's something when you mentioned feng shui there's um there's such a flow to that and yeah. Um, you really can feel an energy of a home, whether it's cluttered or clear or halfway in between. Um, and it's so comforting to know that when people come into your home, that they feel just as comfortable as you do. And my home wasn't always that way. I remember my first home, my mom coming in and being like, this house doesn't even feel like it's lived in. So oh. I've, I've come a long way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've come yeah. a long way. <laughs> So if someone were starting from scratch, what would be like your top three tips for starting the process of decluttering? So I think that the easiest place to start is your bathroom. Your bathroom holds usually zero sentimental of anything. So it's easy to kind of clear out clutter in those particular areas. So I always say start with the bathroom and narrow down to just necessities that you actually need and who also wouldn't want to have a bathroom that looked like a spa. So make things very minimal and streamlined. Um, my second tip is usually at the entryway where you walk into your home. Um, I use terms such as dumping ground and dropping zone. So that is a big dumping area, especially for parents. Kids come in, they dump their backpacks, they dump their shoes. So my tip for that area is again, streamline it, put baskets or hooks to hang backpacks on. If your children, like my children won't hang on hooks, so they put their backpacks in baskets. And it seems like, oh, that's, what would that do? But it, 
creates a zone that looks less cluttered, like it's in a containment. And I say in those areas only have shoes for that season. So if we're, we're out of flip-flop season now, you know, we're into boots and store those away in, in bins or if you have an extra closet or something. And the third tip would be usually the kitchen counter with your papers and files, have some type of storage container that you can contain those in so that doesn't, just doesn't look quite so messy. Like you can get to it later on, but have a spot where you can drop it. So those are like, I call them drop zones. Yeah, that's that's a good tip because excess mail usually ends up on the counter and you're opening bills and stuff. And I the entryway for me is also my dining room. So it's like oh, yes. when you walk in, <laughs> if there's clutter everywhere, it would look it would look terrible. But I I like just have everything having its own place. And I think that's good for, for kids too. And then what about um what about home offices since we are all working from home what do you what do you suggest for keeping that area clutter free so i think you have to work with what your natural tendencies are so again similar to the kitchen counter so if you have an area that you tend to drop your files and they're just laying say like on your desk you have to create some type of containment for them whether that's an upright file folder or something that's flat like as though they're stackable file folders um, I like just a few things on my desk to minimize like what I have to move around and clean and then maybe a container for your pens and highlighters. So just keep things very minimalistic, like only what you need in that particular office space. Um, I'm actually sitting in my office right now and I, I have a couch behind me. So if I want to sit on the couch and work from there and I have, I, I'm not big on books. So I don't have a lot of books, but, um, everything in here is only what I need it to be. And I like to keep it clean. So it's very, I'm not minimal, like minimalism, how they talk about that. Like you're living with a very bare minimum of items. I'm not there. I like things to be very attractive and nice, but simplistic. So I don't have to clean as much, but you really have to work with what your natural tendencies are as far as where you drop your, your items and then some type of nice containment for them. That makes sense. What is your general rule of thumb for getting rid of stuff? Because that I think is something we all struggle with is yes. getting rid of things. And it's interesting. I, ever since a child, I don't really have a sentimental attachment to a lot of things. So for me, it's very easy. And I always use my husband as an example that um, he is a borderline hoarder. Like he keeps things from way, way back. He has a hard time. So those are like people are sentimental about things, um, births, weddings, holidays, things like that. Um, they really have to, you have to look at it is, do I use it? Do I absolutely positively like love it beyond measure um, in order for me to like let him sort of keep things? But we've been together 15 years and this year he just let me tackle his closet. So it is a very, you know, it's hard. Um, my side of the closet looked awesome. His side, not so much. Um, and that's one thing I think you just have to decide for yourself, can I let go of it? And it's okay if you can't, just know that it may not look how you want it to look. But for people who have a hard time getting rid of things, I would say rotate your seasonal items out so that your closet is more streamlined. So like right now I'm getting rid of all my fall items. I'm unpackaging all of my winter clothing um, and vice versa throughout the year. I think that those are really easy tips if you can't get rid of things, um, but think they'll go, they're gonna go to a good home. You know, they can go someplace nice. And if it's, you know, sometimes there are things you have to throw out. And I know that that's hard for people. So if they can't, maybe just take it out of the space to minimize the space that you're actually working with. But it's hard. It, that's probably the closet is probably the hardest place for people. Because I have think a we, we hold on to like clothing that we may be used to wear, hoping that we'll wear it again. I <laughs> yes. That's a problem for me. It's like, but I loved that suit and I wore it when I was oh. 25. I'm totally going to yes. wear it. Again. <laughs> but I'm not going to wear it again. It should go oh. away. Yes, it took me a long time. I will say, I'd say that I'm not that sentimental, but one of the very first suits that I bought was tailored and it was beautiful. 
And it took me a while to get rid of the last long coat because it was just so nice, but it was never going to fade again. Like it just, it just wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, one of my daughters is exactly the same size as me. So I saved all of my Levi's from when I was a teenager. Oh, and they're so popular now. <laughs> yeah, and they fit her perfect. So that was, that oh. was a good thing to save, but. Yeah, absolutely. What about our kids, the stuff our kids make for us? That's a hard thing for me because you, you want to keep it forever. Yes. But I mean... If you've got a couple of kids that have gone through school, you have a lot of projects and artwork. Yes. And I think what's so great at the time that we live in is technology is you can now take photographs of those items and you can actually have them made into books. So you can have a nice book to put up on the shelf versus like, because they stack, they're not flat anymore. So they kind of start to build up on you. So that's one option. And you can create a file because I, I do actually have a file of a couple items from each grade level that they're in, but it's only a few items. And what I used to do actually was frame items and put them on the wall. So instead of the refrigerator in their playroom, they would have their own artwork. But that that is a tough one for people. My sister, I think, has an entire crate full of grades and photographs and paintings and everything. And I keep working with her We'll get there someday, but that's really hard. But I think the, the the best one that I found for me is taking photographs of them. That's a really good idea and putting yeah. together a nice album. Yeah, that's I like that. Idea. But that's hard. Yeah, that's that's been a it's tough so one for me. <laughs> Both of my kids are artistic. And so I have so many neat things that they've made, like birdhouses, which those are outside, but like, you know, ceramic things. And yes, those just, are harder. Yeah. Um, what about, because I know we all have one of these, what is your tip for getting rid of the junk drawer? <laughs> we all have a junk drawer. Like what should we be keeping in that junk drawer? And oh, I love that you asked this because this will go, this will be like my husband versus myself. He's allowed a junk drawer and he just cleaned it out i think last week because he was looking for something so what we talked about we talked through this is your keys should be in there um, he has his own business so he just was throwing his receipts in let's put him into a folder it doesn't have to be by month because he won't do that but at least get them into a folder to keep in that drawer and there was like old change so we put like a container for the change in there he had some pens, um, some papers. So we really got some plastic containers to work with the items that you could keep in there. So I think everyone has to decide what they want to put into their junk drawer. For my junk drawer, it tends to be because it's right by where the mail is. So, oh, there's a letter that I need to keep and I don't wanna put it in my office yet and I want easy access. So I tend to keep that in my junk drawer. So my junk drawer have, have, have some papers in it, but everything else has a little container of like thumbtacks and highlighters and pens and scissors, all of that kind of stuff. But that's a really good one because we are so opposite. And that's one thing I think people need to remember is we could have the best intentions on organizing our home, but when you live with someone else, you have to work around what they're able to do and want to do. And that's why he can have a junk drawer because I don't have to open it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're the same way. My husband likes to keep stuff and I don't, I want it to go away. You know, I like to have room for more. Have you uh, read the book, It's Not Your Money by Tosha Silver? No. Okay, it's an amazing book, but she talks about leaving space open. So you leave room for abundance to flow oh, into your that. life. It's an amazing book. I really loved it. And so I'm always very conscious of leaving space open and um, he's not. So, <laughs> so yeah, I get that struggle. I totally get it. We're, we're, he's blocking you. Yeah. He's blocking my abundance. Um, but I, I do other, that with travel. Yeah. I leave space in my suitcase to bring stuff back. Oh yeah. That's, I do. I do that too. I totally do that. Oh. And I always say, well, you know, if I forgot something, then I guess I didn't need it that bad or yes, I'll get absolutely. it when I'm there or whatever. The other space that I really struggle with is my spice cabinet and keeping mm -hmm. that organized. Do you have any tips for keeping that organized and keeping it 
organized in a way that you can actually see what you have in there? Yeah, yes, absolutely. So the first thing that you would really want to do when you're starting is actually look at the expiration dates because you will be amazed at how much has actually expired. So that will clear out a whole lot for you right there. Um, turntables, plastic turntables. Okay. Kind of think of like a, a, a lazy Susan, but it's, it's a small little rotating um, container. Those work really well. And then you can organize by a, a category. You can, you know, like it would be like all your flowers that you would cook with, your bacon soda flour, um, different types of oils can be on another side. So that's one way. And there's also stackable containers. So almost like a riser. So you would have yeah. your first level, second level, third level. Those work really well. Um, there's some also really fancy, I call them fancy. Um, it's like magnetic that would go on the, the inside of your um, cabinet. Also works really, really well for you too. Okay. Some, some people like them magnetically outside of the cabinet also. I like things off the countertops and off the walls. So that really wouldn't work for me. But um, And then also... If you don't have a lot and you everything's expired, you can kind of just build up from there. So slowly grab more items that as you need them. But that's a really good, that's a really good question because that yeah. thing can build up on you. Yeah, mine's a mess. I end up with bottles of Advil in there and you know, <laughs> just a bunch of random stuff always ends up in that cab cabinet yeah. because of where it is in my kitchen. And I imagine half the spices in there probably should go. So That'll yeah. be my project for this weekend. Oh, like that's through so the spice cabinet. If, if you find that there's groupings of things that you use consistently, you can just actually get a small plastic container and put those items there and you can just pull out the whole container to, to work with at a time. I know like for, I'm thinking like making spaghetti sauces, you have your oils and specific spices. You can pull the whole container out and you're all ready to go too. That works well for some people. That is a good tip. I, I could totally see doing that because we, we use different oils for different things. And then, this dip, yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. The other thing that I feel like I have built up in my house are cook our pots and pans. Mm, yes. And bases. <laughs> like. Oh, bases. Yes. Yeah. I think I have a whole entire cupboard full of bases. I should probably just donate those, but with the pots and pans, I feel like I need, you know, one of every size, but then I find I don't use all of them. We just discussed this. This was like, am I have a Facebook group? And this was our discussion topic was like um, Tupperware and plasticware and pots and pans. They're so insanely frustrating because the, the covers never match. The covers of pots and pans are so awkward that they never go anywhere. So um, what I'd done is for myself, I do stack my pots and pans and I don't have many. So like how you mentioned, there's some that you don't use. I have a large pot, a medium pot and a small pot. That's all that I have. And then I have maybe three sizes of frying pans and that's it. So they're all stackable, but if people have the funds too, you can actually have drawers custom built in your house where your pots will lie all nice. And then there's a nice little it's almost like a hidden small drawer on top of that that will pull out and the lids fit perfectly on top of that. I don't know if I'm verbalizing that correctly. So yeah, you sort of, you I, can, I can visualize that. Yeah. And I think I think I put a, a picture of one on the, my Facebook group. Um, and then another idea for the, the pots and pans covers is to find some type of container that you can put them up either horizontally or vertically, whatever you like, and they're contained in one spot so that you don't have to be like, I just picture like things used to be like, you're, you're throwing the pots out and you can't find the container, you know, to put on top of them and everything. And um, so those are my two tips for, for that. And flatware, um, sorry, the plasticware is again, finding containers to put them in and the vertical um, file folds that stand this direction, they can fit those covers in perfectly. Oh um, yeah, I can see that. It usually fits underneath your cabinet really, really well. And it doesn't have to be expensive. You go to Staples and pick that up. And um, I had posted, um, Nancy Cleveland had given me this happiness box and it's colorful and she made it, it was just a box and she put um, some type of paper, like a wrapping paper around it. That's my container box right now. So I didn't have to spend any money, but hmm. you can go 
as inexpensive or as expensive as you want, you know, based on what, how you want to contain things. But I think everything just works better in a container and it looks nicer and appealing. It's not, not so messy. Yeah. Because the, the, I the vertical for the caps makes sense because when you pull them out, you know, and they all fall out of the cabinet, it can be a gi big giant mess. So, so yeah, that's a great tip too. Well, I really, really appreciate your help and um, it's been really fun having you. And if somebody needs further assistance, how can they find you and how can they get a hold of you? So I have a Facebook group, which is Declutter Homes and Minds. And then I, um, they can DM me on that page. And then I also have Instagram, which is my business name, Centered Homes and Minds. And they can DM okay. me through there too. And it's just a lot of it's a group, mainly I will say moms, and we just share ideas and everybody works through it. And we're just trying to help each other so that we can have more time to do what we want to do. That's, that's the whole goal is to have a nice, calm space, but then we get to do what we want to do. <laughs> yeah, very cool. I know moms need that help because it is hard to keep the kids, you know, on track and organized. And that's our, that's our sacred space, you know, when we're done parenting for the evening. So it's yes. nice to have it all um, organized and clean and pretty. So thank you so much. This has been really helpful. Um, thank you everybody who watched and Mary, I will post a link to your group in the comments section and leave this replay up so people can get in touch with you. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. It's been fun. It has been fun. Have a great holiday weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Um,